Aloha, this is Michael Kitchen here, hanging out at Robert Thomas Art. Woke up a little late today. Didn't even put any water on my hair. In case you're wondering why I've got my hair like bed head action in the back. <laughs> Not that you could have seen it if I didn't show you. But anyways, I just wanted to say aloha. I hope you're having an absolutely phenomenal day. And I uh, just recorded a little beat here. It's just real simple. It's got, it's got a bass line. Bow, bow. In G minor, actually, interesting beat, and then just a basic beat. And I'm gonna be rapping today. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna rap. Maybe I'll rap or sing or whatever. But straight from the Word of God, and uh, this is highlighted. I think I highlighted it back in 2009. I'm reading through the Bible again, straight front to back, Genesis through Revelation. Last time I did it in about nine months, this time I'm doing it in 90 days. It's my 90 day challenge. It's my 90 day challenge, challenge. It's my 90 day challenge, and it's not about getting skinny, no, it's about learning all about the Word of God. It's the soul, it's my only thing. I know that is true a hundred percent of the time. Oh, oh, oh. That's basic, basic stuff here. Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Oh, 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 oh. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter. Not the least stroke of pen by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be least in the kingdom of heaven. Will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Okay. That's like Matthew 5. Right there. Right there, verse 17 through 20. A lot of people think that when Jesus came, he destroyed the Ten Commandments and we don't have to obey them anymore. But I'm going to read them to you clearly now. There's ten of them. There's ten of them. Ten of them. Here we go. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. This is in Deuteronomy 5. Verse 7 says, you shall have no other gods before me. Let's count them. That's one. And number two, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments keep my commandments. I'm just going to read all ten of them. Thou shalt not misuse the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Number four, observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you're to work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, or your daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Yeah, I keep reading Number five, honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Ba -ba Number six, thou shalt not murder. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight, you sh I'm saying thou, this is an NIV, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not give false testimony against your witness. Uh, I'm sorry, against your neighbor. 
And number 10, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Those are the Ten Commandments. I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, it's pretty clear in the Word that He was that sacrifice, the pure sacrifice that covered all of our sins. And that we cannot get to heaven by being perfect or by obeying the law. It's impossible, because if you break one, you broke them all. I want to keep it simple, because that's how Jesus said the scriptures. He said the kingdom of heaven is like, if you want to enter in, you need to become like a child. And children, they're not too complicated. They don't try to make things out to be more than it really is. So it's simply this. The Ten Commandments are important. The Sabbath is Friday night till Saturday night. Friday sunset till Saturday sunset. Even when they changed the calendars, it went from Thursday the 4th. They added 10 days to line it up with the solar system. Went from Thursday the 4th to Friday the 15th. Went, still went from Thursday to Friday. That same Sabbath that Jesus kept and he rested. And I don't think that that commandment is really that hard. It's more about, are we, are we willing to honor the Lord our God and rest on that day? And it's Friday night till Saturday night. The Jews got it right. And um, you can't get to heaven by being good. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. Only Jesus was perfect. The reason? He wasn't born from the seed of Adam because that seed was contaminated when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. We're all born into a sinful nature. Well, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, He basically, the Holy Spirit got Mary pregnant and that's how Jesus came about. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. Let's keep it simple. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Buddha won't get you there. Mohammed won't get you there. You won't get you there. So now that we get saved, now what? Do we go on living like we used to? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life? No, 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 no. We literally become a new creature, a creation. It's like the old man dies. He literally dies, and the new man comes to life. Every day we're to pick up our cross and follow him. Those habits and patterns that we've developed for years of disobedience. They might try to come back. That dead man might try to come back to life. But we are to crucify it. The way that we live holy and we live righteous is through the power of Christ Jesus. Literally. He lives in us. His spirit dwells in us. We are his slaves. He's our master. We serve a loving, giving, just God. Well, if he's so just, why does he send people to hell? He's not going to force anyone to be in his presence for all eternity. And if they want to be separate from him, that's their choice. So many voices, so many choices, so many noises. I'm like, hmm, what should I choose? What should I do? The lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life are pulling me, yanking me, trying to, to deceive me, saying you can live how you want and still be holy. It is not true. No, don't step on the blood of Jesus. Don't keep playing in the pig pen. No, get out. Let him cleanse you up and ask him how he wants you to live your life. So much, so much. So much, so much, so much. Just focus on those ten. Memorize them. And we don't rest on the Sabbath to be religious. We don't obey Him. He says if you want to c c fulfill all the laws, love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> and love God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your mind, all that. 
Well, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to kill your neighbor. You're not going to steal from your neighbor. You're not going to sleep with your neighbor's spouse. You wouldn't want someone doing those things to you, would you? So those all get fulfilled by loving your neighbor as yourself. Loving God with everything. If you love me, you obey me, is what he says. Honor your father and your mother. Don't use the Lord's name in vain. If you're watching a video or something and they're saying, you know, they're saying his name and they're taking the meaning out of it, they're using it as a cuss word, ask God to convict your heart. Shut that garbage off. Don't let any unclean thing before your eyes. If you're addicted to pornography, if you fall in that area and you just look at people doing things that should be done in private between a husband and a wife and you just get so excited, it's like a drug for you. Ask God to cleanse you of that. But guess what? It takes perseverance. It's like set, set a goal. Say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay pure for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days and keep track of it. And the more you do it, it's like working out. Your spiritual muscles, your self-control gets stronger and stronger and stronger. If you're jealous, if you're greedy, take a minute to just step back and realize, hey, in my own strength, I am jealous and greedy. If you lie, you just make things up. Just realize it and ask God, God, help me to kill that. Crucify, take up my cross. It's not about just lying back and saying, Jesus, do it for me, please. He already did it. He was tempted in every way we're tempted and he lived a perfect life. He didn't sin once, not one time. He walked in perfect obedience to God's law. He kept the Ten Commandments. They tried to get him, trip him up with their little million laws that they added on to those commandments and he was like listen boys listen listen to me listen to me he even made it like you heard that it was said that if you commit adultery you know he's like if you look at a woman lustfully you've already committed adultery jesus on the sermon on the mount was just like tearing it up tearing it up you heard it was said in the old days don't murder i tell you if you if you hate your brother you already murdered him in your heart Guess what? It says God judges the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. On our own, our hearts are wicked and dirty. Trust me. Trust me. And deceptive. And Satan comes as an angel of light, Disney Channel, happy day, whatever. Satan comes to deceive you. A lot of these Christian churches, you think that they're preaching the word of God. They're just preaching a positive self-help. You are your own God and throwing in Jesus here and there. Keep it in real, keep it in real. I pray right now for whoever's watching this video that your life will never be the same again. That you will read this book from cover to cover and that the Holy Spirit of God will fill you and consume you completely. That your life will never be the same again. Feel free to leave your comments on this video. If you hated this video, if you loved this video, if you didn't really care either way about this video, I'd love to hear your comments. Have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you soon.